welcome to this live uh, uh, webcast across Australia. Uh, a big, massive hello to my friends in Ipswich. I love you. Thank you very much. I'm so proud to be doing the Ministry of Food in Ipswich, kicking it off. It's such a great, great, beautiful thing. Uh, I want to say thank you to the good guys for making this possible. Family-run business, uh, without the cash, the big cash that they've put into this project, we've got a three-year plan and, hope, and hopefully beyond. Uh, we couldn't do this. Uh, thank you to the local government for funding this, uh, funding this as well. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got Anna Bly, the Premier of Queensland. Thank you, my darling. Uh, I think you're near a pot and a pan and a big old chopper. Um, get ready for it, girl. We're going to have a little cook-up, but thank you for coming. Um, so, lovely people. Uh, we're going to take questions. Over here is the one and only Danny McCubbin, and he is one of you. He is... Where did you come from? Gold Coast, Queensland. He is a Queensland boy. Uh, he's going to be taking questions from Ipswich people, bloggers, Twitters, uh, you name it, Facebookers, uh, and we've got questions from all over Australia as well. Let's get cooking. So, um, in front of you, uh, what we should have is, is a griddle pan. Uh, we should have uh, a kind of uh, little pot here for our rice. That should be on a low heat, high heat, uh, medium, uh, medium high heat on the griddle pan. You should have an oven at about 200 degrees Celsius. And we are going to make a beautiful crispy skinned piri piri chicken. Uh, this is sort of African Portuguese uh, sort of uh, in, in, in history. Um, it's named piri piri after these bad boys. Let's have a close up of there. Uh, these are piri piri chilies. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, this sauce has got spice, it's got attitude. Uh, very simple to make. So, first things first, let's get some salt and pepper on your chicken thighs. Uh, you should be working onto greaseproof paper or a plastic board. Uh, try not to use your hands. If you do, you're going to have to have a little wash up. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of thyme going on here as well, if you've got some. Thyme or rosemary or bay leaf is pretty damn good on this, just to give it a little bit of flavour as it's cooking. Um, we're also going to be cooking today beautiful fluffy lemon rice. We're going to be doing a nice little simple crunch salad. Um, also, we're going to be doing a nice homemade ice cream in about 45 seconds. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is get these chicken thighs, get your tongs uh, and just move them around in the seasoning. You want salt and pepper on both sides. So uh, Anna Bly, I hope you're um, tossing that meat over there, girl. And uh, all the others, we've got, um, we've got some other people there. We've got one of the local elders uh, uh, that have come. We have got um, Anna Gare, one of the uh, Australia's best uh, chefs who's um, uh, supporting us and one of our ambassadors. Thank you, Anna. Honestly, I really appreciate you getting on board with this. This is about chefs coming together, people to, uh, coming together uh, to push the Ministry of Food across Australia uh, and help people in towns of need. Um, we've been running uh, the Ministry of Food in England for about five years now. Uh, we've got them in America as well, um, and they work. They work because in this day and age, let's put chicken on our grills, guys. Skin side down onto your hot grill. Notice that I haven't put any oil in the griddle pan, right? You don't need it. Never, ever put oil in your griddle pan. It will stink the house out. It will smoke. You don't want that. And we want to render this natural fat. One, to get the fat out so it's healthier. And two, because we want to make this skin really crispy. What you can do if you want to speed up Normally, normally a chicken thigh will take about 45 minutes to cook. I'm just going to get a knife here, let's have a close up on that, and you can just slash up that meat. You can just loosen it next to the bone. What that does, it allows the seasoning and the heat in quicker. So, uh, you can just do that if you want to. And also, it gives it texture. It's, it looks like I'm kind of wrecking it a bit, but actually it gives it a wonderful texture. So, let's get rid of our chicken boards and stuff. Uh, what I was going to say is, Ministry of Food, uh, you know, they really do, the, these cooking centres really, really do work. Um, basically, the idea is that, you know, in this day and age where mums and dads are working hard, most schools don't teach you how to cook and budget and shop anymore. Um, you know, the Ministry of Foods are there as a local resource to help people, skin on skin, Local person on local person, guidance, love, care, 
And we've had them for about five years in England, and they really, really do work. So that's fantastic. Um, Danny, have we got any questions coming through from Australia at the moment? Yes, Jamie. We've got Kerry who's asking, what can I cook on Christmas Day for dessert other than plum pudding? Plum pudding? Uh, other than? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. is um, on, the, on the website, jamieoliver.com, yep. what we've got now is a whole bunch of desserts. Go and have a look, but check out my mum's Christmas trifle. Uh, it, it's really Christmassy. It's old school. Uh, it looks epic, and I can't help myself. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Have a, have a little look at that, darling. Um, keep an eye, throughout this whole process, keep an eye on your chicken. Make sure you're tossing it. Um, you want to give it character and colour. Um, right, we're going to move on to the piri piri sauce. Uh, for that, we need a liquidizer. I have a liquidizer here. Um, what we're going to do is throw in a number of different ingredients. In front of you, lovely people, we should have the red onions. So we've got a red onion here, that's been peeled. We can quarter that a little bit just to uh, lighten the load for the liquidizer. I want you to pick up your red onion and put it into the liquidizer. Let's go a little wider on that close up so we can see what on earth is going on. And let's get in the bottom of there. We're going to have some chilies. Let's just break those little chili chili. Uh, let's just break those piri piri um, chilies up. I'm going to put two or three in to start with, and if you want to pimp it up and make it hotter later, you can. I'm going to turn my chicken now, give it some love. Any good questions coming through, Danny? Feel free to interrupt uh, me, brother. Not as yet. Everyone's saying hello. Everyone's excited to be here. I also just thought I'd let everyone know that if you want to cook these recipes, they're on the website as well. So I know some of you went out and bought the ingredients and are cooking along with Jamie as well. So, on that page where you're engaging and asking the questions, the recipes are there, Brother. so give them a go. And he does need Okay, so back to the liquidizer, guys. We've got the, the two or three uh, piri piri chilies in there, we've got the one onion in there, and I've got about a flat level, well, about a level teaspoon um, of uh, paprika, sweet paprika. Um, you can put a little bit more in it if you like it, a little hotter. Um, I'm going to take a little handful of basil, Mr. Close-Up, get on that, brother. You're a bit slow today, aren't you? What happened? Did you have a, lot, did you have a light, late night last night? Some basil's gone in. Um, basil's gone in there. That's not traditional. i tell you what, though, it lifts the whole story. Back to my chicken pan. We'll probably go on the overhead camera. Uh, you can see here uh, we've got some chicken getting done there. Very nice, very nice. I like that shot, a bit of help. Um, so, let's just review the piri piri sauce so you guys know what's going on. One onion chopped up, two or three piri piri uh, chilies, um, a teaspoon or two of the paprika. We're going to shake in one and a half tablespoons ish of uh, Worcestershire sauce. Uh, we're going to go for a couple of swigs of white wine vinegar. We're going to get a couple of cloves of garlic. Um, in there, actually, we're gonna hit the garlic because we're going to cook this. Four cloves of garlic uh, is really, really good. So we're just going to get our four cloves and give it a spank. So take the ends off of the garlic, and then I, what I tend to do is just get my hand on here and just. So a big hello to all of you lovely Aussies around the country. A massive hello to all you Aussies in Ipswich. Um, listen, this, this Ministry of Food thing is a beautiful thing. It's about community. It's about sharing. It's about people helping people. All the ingredients are there. Uh, I'm going to be highly involved. Uh, we're going to be training and working with all the people running uh, the operation. We've got a lovely team already in Ipswich. Um, and, you know, I know that this is going to be a movement uh, that's going to really make a difference. So I'm so excited about this. Uh, these four cloves of garlic, I'm going to put those into the liquidizer. I'm going to put just a, just a little bit of olive oil, just to join those flavours up. And I'm going to whack in the juice of two lemons. Now, you could use lime. What I want you to do is get your two lemons uh, and give them, put your weight on them and give them a good old roll. 
Um, I'm just going to roll them just to kind of get the fragrance, uh, get the fragrance uh, and the juice out of the lemons. You can take um, the zest off of some lemons if you want. You know, um, you can do that. It gives you extra flavour. But the juice really is enough to get it really going. So what we got there is a balance of heat. Squeeze the lemon into your hand and catch those pips. Have a look at that, Mr. Cameraman. So look how proficient my hand is with a sieve. See? You don't need a sieve anymore. Just use your hands. Lemon juice goes in. Now, I know it's... Uh, what time are we in Australia, Danny, right now? It is approximately 5.30. Depending where you are, though, because of daylight saving. OK, that's nice to know. So Maybe five, our Aussie friends could tell us. Around 5.30 in Aussie. But if you have a little look at our window here... Six. Look at this. It's snowing. It is... <laughs> England... England has come to a standstill. We're not used to... Uh, we're not very good at snow, really, even though we do have it every year. The trains have stopped. The aeroplanes are stopped. The schools are closed down. I'm telling you, you and all your ancestors, you made the right decision going to Australia. Um, I have no idea what we're doing in England, but it's all stopped because we got a bit of snow. Um, so we go lid onto the piri piri sauce. Uh, you might want to just put a swig of water in here just to loosen it all up. Just a little swig, and we're going to liquidise that. We're going to need a nice pinch. Once you've got it going, I hope it's not splashing everywhere over there. You want a nice pinch of salt and pepper. Salt and pepper goes in. And then we want to, you really, you know, good cooking, good fresh cooking is about taste and flavour. Turn the liquidizer off. Woo! Ha ha! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about at six o'clock in the morning in England. Piri piri sauce for breakfast. Okay, taste it. Uh, get the seasoning right. I've got acid there, I've got lemon, I've got chilli, I've got smokiness from the paprika. I've got that hum from the garlic and the, and, and the onions. One last little whip up. The piri sauce is done. Okay, the chickens, have a look on the chickens over here on that top shot. Here we go. We've got chickens that are golden. They're, they're not cooked by any means, but they're golden. They've got character. Um, and what I want to do now is get myself... You should have two peppers in front of you guys. Uh, a red and a yellow pepper. What I do with this is just push the stalk in like that. And then you can pull it out. And then you can literally open it up like that, tap out any seeds. So push it in, open it out, tap it out like that. So period, th this is basically a 30 minute meal. This is the kind of thing that when I get home at night, you know, I can rattle out in about 20, 25 minutes. Um, another little trick on this that I do is I literally get an everyday brick, roll it in tin foil, um, and I preheat that on my griddle pan or frying pan or your barbecue and to speed up the cooking of that chicken even more at home whack the hot brick on top and it holds it down gets it really crispy so get just rip or cut these peppers into little pieces like this it's a kind of rustic uh, meal I'm gonna throw these peppers around the chicken now now remember what we've got, you should, you should have an earthenware type dish. I put that in the oven, so uh, it doesn't matter if you haven't put it in the oven. But in the oven here, I have got the, uh, an earthenware type dish. Now if you look at this, it doesn't matter what you got it out of, whether it's porcelain, white, this is a kind of like a cheap uh, Portuguese style uh, dish. What I can do is just whack in that piri piri sauce, like that. And the idea of this is that the piri piri sauce is just blipping away and then on top you've got that beautiful crispy chicken thigh, you know, uh, in all its gorgeousness, sucking up that sauce, absolutely lovely. Um, Danny, any more questions, brother? Yes, I have one that uh, I think you'll find really interesting. We've got uh, Linda from Perth who asks, 
Oh, actually, has said that she's trying this dish, but she's actually cooking tofu instead of chicken because she's vegetarian. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel it's emotional. Sorry? There's, there's no jeopardy involved. There's no death involved of an animal. If I could be a vegetarian, I, I would be cooking a bit of tofu myself. But you think it would go well with the piri piri Look, sauce? Tofu is a great carrier of flavour. Uh, you can get different types of quality of tofu. Um, but yeah, I mean, it might help to marinate it a little bit in some thyme and some olive oil. Absolutely. Um, thyme bashed up. But yeah, I mean, the nice thing about this dish is this could be like gnarly lamb chops. It could be pork chops. You know, you could be using tofu. Um, if you can't get tofu, like really nice big field mushrooms or portobello mushrooms would, would work mm. well in this, you know. So look guys, if, if I can just show you the concept now, and we're all cooking along together, so I'm trying to kind of keep my speed down. Um, I'm going to take this beautiful uh, chicken here, let's get some focus, and let's get an overhead shot just for a second. Just, I'm going to take this from here to here, from here to here. I want you to notice that the skin that we've invested our heat and energy in is not getting wet. Don't go trying to make uh, crispy skin and then cover it in sauce. So notice that the sauce is around the meat and the skin is exposed to yet more cooking and crispiness. Uh, these peppers here, I'm just going to give these a bit more cooking and um, it's looking pretty good actually. Try and get the um, peppers coloured up a little bit. I think what I'll do is I'll turn these and come back. I want to thank a few more people for coming down to Ipswich. Everyone in Ipswich, I love you guys. I uh, hope you're having a great time. Um, first and foremost, I would have loved to have been with you today, but I keep making babies. And uh, I, I don't think it was my fault. And to be honest, last night when I was giving him his bottle at 11 o'clock at night, he doesn't really look like me much either, so, you know, you never know. But uh, I, I'm sorry I can't be with you, but I've got a little seven-week-year-old boy called Buddy, and he's gorgeous, um, and he's taken up lots of time, and he's not sleeping much. So, I, I actually, I'm in Australian time at the moment. Um, <laughs> but next time in Australia, um, I can't wait to come and see what you guys are doing. Um, we've had the, the team that are in Ipswich right now. Uh, we've had those guys over. So, um, you know, and, and we had a great time. Um, I want to thank some lovely local people. We've got Rachel uh, Noland, MP. Thank you for coming. We've got Paul, forgive me if I say the names wrong, uh, Paul Pisali, the Mayor of Ipswich. Paul, I've heard a lot about you, actually. You're very infamous. Um, so thank you very much, Paul. Uh, Ruby Slipper, uh, the anchor, the radio host. I know I was talking to you earlier. God bless. Uh, Zane Jackson from the uh, Queensland Times, um, who will be talking about this lovely link-up and everything that we're doing and how technologically advanced we are to get this live link-up working. Not. Uh, we've got Mark Timms from The Good Guys. And, and again, a massive, massive thank you to Good Guys. Um, you know, this is, this, is, this, is, this is not a job for me. Uh, you know, this is, this is absolutely 100% a bit of beautiful social work, something that's important. The Australian public have been beautiful to me. They've supported me uh, for the last 11 years. And to be honest, the Australian public uh, have got me and understood m me and my style of cooking and what I do before even my own. So it's a pleasure to work with the good guys uh, to get this going. So um, now these peppers are looking pretty charred. Let's just arrange these around the gaps of the chicken, right? And basically, we're going to whack this in the oven and it's going to blip and cook in between. Try and mix up the reds and yellows, mainly to be camp. Um, and just sort of, you know, it's good to eat with your eyes, make the food exciting. Um, just going to slip this around here. Danny, any more questions, yes. brother? Yes, um, we have a question from Premier Anna Bly. Who's, they're all actually cooking the piri piri chicken over there, and not Ipswich at the moment. She says, "Does the piri piri sauce lose its heat because it's mighty, ooh la la, as in it's hot?" So, does it lose its it, heat? Does it get less pungent? I guess. Okay. I hope they, uh, I hope they got it right, Anna. Um, yep. uh, hi, Anna. Um, just before I answer that question, I'm now going to put this piri piri. Uh, let's have a close up on that so they can see what's happening. Right. So you can see there's veg around the gaps. There's the skin exposed here is going to get even crispier, and the piri piri sauce is like in a bath. 
You know, that's just on the bottom of that chicken. That's going to go in the oven now for about 20 minutes, okay, which is enough time for us to make the salad and the rice. I've got a pan here for the rice on. Let me answer um, Anna's question. Um, we have used quite a lot of chilli here, but absolutely she's correct. That kind of blipping away, that mixing with the sweetness of the peppers and the, and the juice from the chicken on the bone, it is going to mellow it quite a lot, actually. Um, and actually, when you put acid and, and sweetness with chilli, it does kind of tone it down a little bit. But it's still going to have a kick, Anna, so, you know, be prepared. Um, guys, I want to serve this kind of dish with a beautiful rice, simple, basic rice. None of this food is complicated. This is typical stuff that we're going to be uh, doing in the Ministry of Food, basic stuff. Here's a basic, you wouldn't believe the amount of letters that I get from all over the world. How can I make the best rice? My rice is always sticky. Uh, it's never very nice. Um, dead simple. For four people, get a regular builder's mug like this. Um, fill it up to the top. That's roughly always going to be enough uh, for four people. So that goes into a hot pan. And then over that, you can pour um, some uh, boiling water. I'm just going to fill it up with some um, tap water here. Turn your pan onto full whack. And here's the theory, guys. One cup of rice will serve four people. One cup of rice to two cups of water will cook you. You won't have to drain it. It's called the absorption method, right? You won't have to drain it. You won't have to do anything to it. We season it with some salt in there. Um, and I'm just going to make it a basic lemon rice. So I'm literally just going to cut this lemon here in half and place it in here. Actually, let me just cut the bottom of that lemon off so it's got a flat surface. And then I'm going to place it. Let's have an over-the-head shot. Uh, you can't see it. That's all right because I'm working around you. Uh, if the gas works. Let me move it back to the over-the-head shop. There you go. So it's basically salt, lemon. If you want to put a little bit of herbage in there, there you go, a little bit of thyme. <coughs> Lid over the top. Happy days. So that's going to go on full whack, lovely people. So, piri, 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 piri chicken. I couldn't even talk then. In the oven. Rice on. That's only going to take about eight or nine minutes to cook perfectly. It will be light and fluffy. Um, the next thing we're going to do is a salad, but that is a perfect opportunity to take another question from the one and only local boy, Danny. Local to Queensland and Gold Coast. Haven't been there for a while, so hi to everyone on the uh, sunny Gold Coast. Um, we've got Katie from Laidley who says, Jamie, why did you start Ministry of Food in the first place? Okay, listen, um, in England, most of Europe, America especially, uh, and, and, and now, shockingly to me, I've worked in Australia for 11 years, never realised there was a problem. Two years ago, I got slapped. I mean, literally, the, I didn't realise there's some of the worst obesity problems in the world, in, in first world countries, in Australia. I didn't believe it. But in parts of the burbs, there really is this breakdown of an understanding of food. And when you get that breakdown, and it's the same in England, so it's not like us and, and, us and you, it's exactly the same. When you get the breakdown of food information, food passion, um, People start not being able to be clever about food, shopping, if you get a recession or you're under strict budgets. What happens is, uh, in towns, um, and I noticed this back home in England in a town called Rotherham, where the Ministry of Food started, um, there was very little fresh produce, there was very little food education. All the government bodies that were standing there saying, you know, we're being asked by, you know, the Prime Minister to stop or halt obesity, they didn't really know what to do. They were producing literature, they were spending money on campaigns. But in my mind, the only thing that truly helps and saves people is skin on skin, people on people. Um, so I set up a shop in the middle of town, just like in Ipswich, uh, a friendly place run by talented local people that love food. Uh, I kind of wanted it to be an emporium, like a food tourist information, you know. And no matter if you're rich or poor, big or small, black or white, whatever, you know, if you want to go into that shop and say, help, help me, uh, I don't know how to cook, I can't boil an egg, I can't cook a roast dinner, I can't make a stew, I'm on a budget, I've only got this much money a week, 
I'm a single mum, I've got a little kid, my kid is obviously not looking great, he's not doing so well at school. No matter what your story, you can go into the Ministry of Food and there will be someone lovely there to love you, hold your hand, teach you to shop, to cook. It's not rocket science, you know, Australia is a country of beautiful, beautiful cooking. There's some of the best chefs in the world in Australia. There's a beautiful food culture going on there, but, but, like in England, you know, there's this stretch of excellence to people that are really living in a kind of modern day sort of poverty, you know. So for me, that's what the Ministry of Food was about. It was about creating something that would allow the town to help itself. It's not Jamie Oliver sort of coming to the rescue, Superman and all that, because I'm just a geezer that can cook a couple of things, right? But it, what it is, is it's about a philosophy. Um, and when the good guys came to me and said, we want to do something, the brilliant thing for me is, I do this for a living. Like, it doesn't matter what country it is. If I've got the funds, then I can open these shops. Um, and if we can open these shops, I mean, our shop in Ipswich should be able to see about six to 7,000 people a year. We should be able to change about six to 7,000 people's lives a year in a town that needs help. Uh, and I'm really proud of that. Um, and hopefully it's going to be in Ipswich for a number of years. So, um, good luck to everyone. Let's get back to cooking, lovely people. Danny, I'll come back to you in a second. Yep. Um, okay, it's, if it, once you can see the rice is boiling over here now, let's have a little close-up of that. Right, the minute you kind of get to that, we take that off and we turn the heat down, right, to a simmer. The rice is going to expand and suck up that perfect quantity of water, two cups to one cup of rice, right, and that's going to be gorgeous. The piri-piri is in the oven. Um, and we're going to make a salad now. Let's just talk about salad. Really basic stuff. Um, I've got a bit of salad business over here. Cheapest way to get salad is go buy some seeds. You live in Australia. Uh, you've got no excuses. You put stuff in the ground, it will grow. Uh, it's not like Essex, where you've kind of got, like, we're, we're at about minus 17 at the moment. There ain't much in the garden, I can tell you that now. Um, Okay, um, the first year that I ever planted, if, for anyone out there, listen, I, I, I'm not exactly green, I grow stuff, but the first year I grew stuff in my garden um, properly, well actually properly, I didn't know what I was doing. I had a bunch of Italian seeds, I didn't have a clue, I couldn't read it, I scattered it in the soil, I'd give it some water, it was very untechnical, I'd say 75% of the bodge job that I did worked, and guess what, I had the scruffiest garden, it was all growing over each other, but I had loads of food. It's so easy to grow your own stuff, and it's the cheapest, and it's the tastiest, and when kids get engaged with growing stuff, my God, they'll eat it. Um, let's talk about the philosophy of a decent salad. Um, for me, salad is about contrast, okay? So, crunch, sweetness, you know, pepperiness of leaves like watercress, you can get like uh, crunchy things like co uh, uh, cucumbers in there. You can use cheese, whether it's mozzarella or feta or parmesan. Uh, herbs are always really good in salad. And my sort of general rule is if you can mix up a bit of softness with a bit of crunchiness, with a bit of, you know, uh, veg, with a little bit of, you know, herbs and some cheese, and dress that, it will be delicious. So I've got a little bagged rocket here. Do they call it rocket in Australia? Yes, they do. They don't say arugula, like in, no, um, that's in America. States, isn't it? So I've got, look, I've got some watercress in here. I've got some rocket going in. Basic stuff. Um, the bag salads are, you know, they're kind of great and, and they're sort of convenient, but they are it, the most expensive way to do it. Um, so you can always grow it yourself. Um, I'm going to have some mint going. Mint in salad is just a joy. Um, so we're going to put that in. I, I think it'll be nice to say. If um, Dave can swivel his camera around at our guests in. We've got Tess and her husband or boyfriend. I haven't worked that one out yet. Is it husband? Husband, husband sorry. He just showed me his finger. Um, okay, <laughs> thanks, Jamie. Uh, they won the competition uh, for good guys. Um, what did you have to do for the competition? Um, I know they can't hear you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell them what you're saying. Oh, really? Yes. Really? <laughs> right, I'd like to know what you write. She had to write um, in 30, 30 words or less why I was a good guy. That's nice. Um, 
So Tess and Jamie are here for their competition winners. Um, they got in yesterday, so they're going to be eating at Jamie's Italian. I'm going to send them to my new restaurant, Barbacoa, which is next to St. Paul's Cathedral. No electricity, no gas, just cooking on charcoal and wood. Uh, and we're going to make sure you go to a few other nice places. Lovely to have you. I hope you don't feel too uh, jet-lagged. And they, they've left the kids at home. So, um, yeah, nice. God bless you. I don't know, don't know what I mean by that, but I think you all know what I mean by that. God bless. Um, back to the salad, <laughs> away from Tess and Jamie. Uh, and uh, we're going to go back to the salad. We've got a cucumber here. Um, okay, let's just put that there. Uh, with a cucumber, very, very basic, very, very boring. Get a cucumber. Let's take a fork. Uh, let's have a close-up on this and let's score. There you go. And the focus. There it goes. Let's score up the cucumber um, quite aggressively. Why am I doing this? A couple of reasons. One, it looks pretty. Um, but that's not the real reason. Um, it's about texture and it's about flavour. Um, I'm going to purposefully cut it badly. I think you get all these kind of... You get all these chefs chopping like ninjas, forget about it. Real cooking, real people, you know, the kind of food that my, the people I love, like Rose Gray, uh, Stephanie Alexander, you know, Marcella Hazan, you know, uh, Alice Waters, all these brilliant women cooks, they don't sit there like men trying to <laughs> julienne everything, you know. I want it purposeful, I want planks and chunks, I want it rustic. So look, let's just have a close up on this. Uh, a cucumber here. Um, th is that the closest you can do? Shall I come close to you? Let's give Australia a nice close up. They, look, that's not bad for down the internet. Okay, so there's our close up. Why have we done that? To, to make it look pretty, to make it look rustic, and also that texture that we've created will cling on to dressing and make it delicious. Um, also, we've got some carrots here. I want to show you um, the cheapest bit of kitchen gadgetry that uh, you can get. Uh, is a speed peeler. This little bad boy. This little bad boy here has the ability to not just peel, but if you carry on peeling, you can create wafer thin, beautiful pieces um, of uh, vegetables. It can turn a boring, humble vegetable like a carrot into something beautiful. And let's be really honest, um, there's not many chefs that can get, uh, you know, carrots that thin. So get yourself a three or four dollar speed peeler, all you basic cooks out there, and it'll help you make, it will, it, it, it will make you look good. So carrots goes in. Danny, any other questions, big boy? Not a, not a question as such, but I just thought I'd mention lovely Judy from Tungala in Victoria. Sorry if I don't pronounce her correctly, I've been away for quite a while, but from Tungala in Victoria. She wanted to let you know that three families in her local community have joined together to create a communal garden where they've started to grow all their own produce. And I know that you're a big, you know, um, you support that as well in terms of grow your own. And yeah. their eldest participant is 56, so I just thought I'd mention that because it's an amazing project that they're doing. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, look, guys, this, this um, I've been studying and working in, in the obesity problem bad, you know, about 68% of... Uh, the public going through Australian hospitals right now um, are there because of diet-related illness. Heart disease, diabetes, or uh, many other di cancers, strokes. Um, it is, we're so busy these days, we have so many options, our priorities are changing, you know, every five, ten years. It is so important right now that communities come together and teach the next generation how to cook. It is so important that things like these community gardens happen. It, the, the work that Stephanie Alexander has done in schools for the last 20 years, to be frank, you know, um, it's so important that governments and people like Stephanie do this stuff. Because if we don't, things are going to get out of control. To be honest, they're out of control already. Um, so this whole kind of commute, for me, uh, today, you know, um, what's happening in Ipswich with everyone in the town, the mayor being there, um, you know, Anna being there, um, you know, it's, this is all about community coming together and fixing stuff. And we can fix stuff. So look, we've got a basic salad here. Um, another thing that I quite like to do is use fruit in salads. I've got a pomegranate here. I hope you've got some in Australia. Um, I'm literally just going to put my knife through the pomegranate like this. 
Um, and then just hold the uh, pomegranate like this. There we go. With your hands open. And then spank it. Danny's looking enviously at this pomegranate right now. Yes. Spanking. Mm. <laughs> Live broadcast, Danny. Oh, correct. Sorry. Um, so we're going to just spank. Let's get the mayor of Queensland spanking that pomegranate. And the premier. There we go. <laughs> right. The nice thing is you can see the fruit comes out. Those beautiful little capsules of sweetness. Um, and let's do, a, let's do a basic dressing, lovely people. Uh, let's have a close-up on this jam jar. Lovely man. Um, you're, a little bit, you're a little bit high, aren't you? Let's, let's try and help you. Let's put it up here. Close-up on that jam jar to help the Australian. Uh, the concept, let's crop in a little bit. Let's get rid of the top of that processor. Let's come up a little bit. Oh, and let's go down a bit. Ah, oh, oh, see. Right, the concept of a dressing. Okay, everyone say out loud, three to one. Three to one! Come on, you boring three people in England. <laughs> three to, everyone say three to one. Three, three to one. one! That's more like it. That's what we like to hear. Three to one is the concept of a dressing. What does that mean? That is three parts olive oil to one part vinegar. And whether, you know, and, and uh, actually, three parts olive oil to one part acid. Okay? Now, that acid could be lime, grapefruit juice, orange juice, lemon juice, vinegar. Uh, it really could be almost anything. I'm going to use balsamic just to show you very visually. Back to that jam jar, please. I want to show you very visually that one part of acid, which is about, that is basically three to one. One part acid to three parts olive oil. I'm going to put a bit of lemon juice in there. You can blend and mix your acid, but a bit of lemon juice... Basically, do whatever dressing you want back in Ipswich, okay? It, you make it up your own one. That's the nice thing about the concept of three to one. Um, one part acid to three parts olive oil. Let's have a pinch of salt in there. I've got rock salt in there. And a little pinch of pepper. You can put some herb in there if you want. And then we put the lid on, like this. And you could put mustard in there if you want. And then just shake it. Widen up that close up. There we go. Bit of shaky, shaky woo woo. Let's have, a new, let's have you shaking it over there in Australia. Everyone's typing three to one. On Every, three to one. Three, three, three to, to one. one. Three to one. Three to one is the future. Now, let's, let's make sure that lid's on tight and give it a right good jerking. Right? I want to see the elder jerking. I want Anne jerking. I want the whole of Ipswich. Let's have all your hands in the air right now. Everyone get your hands in the air. God bless you all. Let's go back to the salad. Honestly, you never thought that salad would be so exciting. The dressing goes on, lovely people. You only want to put just enough dressing on your salad and always dress at the very last minute. Don't pre-dress your dressings. Okay, at this point in time, we're going to find our fairy fingers. Oh, I never thought I'd get to this point. So can everyone put your hands in the air, please, even if you're at home across Australia, uh, in your bedroom, naked in your bedroom, whatever you're doing, put your hands in the air. Let's have the mayor with the hands in the air. Let's have all of Ipswich with your hands in the air. Twinkle your fingers. Yes, we are. <laughs> what am I doing? You're going to find your fairy fingers. This is not something that Danny... Show him your fairy fingers, Danny. This is not something that Danny... Uh, invented, even though he does have beautiful fairy fingers. Only on the dance um, floor. We're going to wave. Let's have you waving. Love, I can see you waving. I can see you on the Skype. That's it. Now we're going to get into that salad. And if you haven't got a salad, just imagine you've got a salad. Just give it a good old salad up. Now, you've got to treat this salad like your children. That means you can't have favourites. Don't dress a salad unless you're prepared to dress every single lovely little morsel leaf. So we're going to dress that salad like that. We're going to put all of that beautiful, mix it up from the top to the bottom, and there you go. Don't scrunch it, don't bash it, bring it up to a nice little pile, and then we've got some beautiful, beautiful salad there. To finish it off, thank you Australia for finding your fairy fingers. I think in the press tomorrow, our friend from the Queensland Times, or Herald or whatever it was, I'm sure he's going to be writing up the new way of revolution, fairy fingers. There were builders finding their fairy fingers. You, everyone was finding their fairy fingers. It's a good thing. We're going to go back to our speed peeler. 
that cheap little gadget that makes you look good, okay? Um, we're going to shave Parmesan into beautiful... Let's have a little close-up. Come on, Dave. Let's, is that the most you can do? Let's, let, 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 let's, this is what we want. Let's go. Got you fight there. Yeah, that's what we want. We want a close-up. Here we go. Gordon Ramsay wouldn't give you a close-up like that, would he? He'd be too busy abusing your presenters from your best love TV programs. I thought that was very funny. I'd like to congratulate the, uh, pre the old president of Australia for asking him to leave the country. I wish ours would do the same in England. There you go. Put that in your local paper. Okay, so we've got a lovely shaved parmesan. And how dare he come to your country and take the mickey out of your lovely presenter. How dare he. Okay, so we've got the uh, lovely little bit of parmesan on there. So we've got a nice rustic salad. This is going to move over to here, just above our help. There we go. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Let's, let's move help. Um, we're going to move her. This is, this is the kind of, this is my little message to the world when the, the technology was letting us down. Air, uh, le I, I know you're all impressed that I can spell help. Um, here we go. P. There we go. Nice. We can decorate this here as well. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Let's dress the surface. Abstract art. Yeah, this is like art. It's like graffiti. Let's make some more space. Let's have a look at our rice, lovely people. Let's go to a close-up of the pan. Let's have a little one, two, three. Oh. Now, notice that there is no water in the bottom of that pan. See the little holes that have kind of created themselves there? This, uh, the time would have done its work here. Back to the time, back to the time, don't worry about me. Back to the time, uh, the time would have done its work, so we can throw that away. This lemon here, interestingly, in that little time of cooking, you know, you, you get, of course, the, a lot of this juiciness comes out already, but you've got a kind of jamminess here that's very, very nice. And another thing that you can do, a little bit like being in Morocco, is you can get that lemon and you can half it and you can get rid of that sort of... This, this is a bit of a palavi. This is an optional. You don't have to do this. You can, you can actually take a small part of that lemon, um, get rid of that inside, and you can chop up the lemon like this, and it's actually very fragrant and does very well. Uh, so that's your basic lemon rice. But the one thing I can promise you, Australia, and, and I know, look, for, for a lot of the cooks across Australia at the moment, you might be thinking, that's not technical, that's not clever. No, 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 this is the Ministry of Food. This is the kind of love and care and simplicity that we're going to be teaching in the Ministry of Food, surefire ways um, of getting the best rice every single time. So that rice, lemon can go over here, back into here like that. We can stir that in. Let's just have a... Let's get rid of that pip. Let's just have a look at here again. Can you see how lovely... And look how light that is. Let's give you another even closer close-up because our cameraman likes this. There you go. Lovely, light, hot, simple rice. And of course, from a health perspective, we should be cooking brown rice or even mixing it up with wild rice. Um, and you can. Um, absolutely. So the rice will go... Let's put it on a nice little... Let's put it on a nice little... Let's get a prop for the rice, one of you lovely girls. I'm going to go to the oven now. Let's have a look at our Piri Piri. If you can queue up on my board, please, Dave. Let's have a look at our Piri Piri, guys. Look at that. Now, come on, Eileen. Bubbling, blipping away. Let's have a little look here. Let's try and favour it for you, because you can't even see nothing on there. Let's have a little look. Let's bring it down. Let's, let's hold it down here for you, Dave, because I know we're on basic technology here. Can you see that, Dave? Yeah, come a bit closer. Jack, Jack. I'll come a bit closer. Danny, can we have another question from Australia? Uh, interesting question from Maureen, who's actually in Ipswich. What is your earliest memory of cooking? My earliest memory of cooking... Um, well, my earliest memory of cooking, I was about four years old. I grew up in a pub restaurant. Dad always had eight chefs, pastry chefs. He always had local food, whole deers coming in, and on a Tuesday there'd be the crabs and the whole fish. So that was like my sort of first memory, just living at home, you know, my front room you know, was the pub, the pub, you know, and my kitchen was a commercial kitchen. Uh, the first thing I ever cooked uh, was an omelette. 
And the and then the first time I ever cooked a whole meal was a roast chicken dinner with all the trimmings, and I was about nine. Shamon. And to be honest, I wasn't very clever at school. I didn't do very well at school. Uh, and it, it was the first time I remember my old man sort of patting me on the back and saying, well done, son, I'm proud of you. Uh, and it was the first time that I thought I was actually good at anything. So I thought I might as well stick to doing it. So I used to work there at the weekends and the summer holidays and, you know, the rest is history. Should we get back to some cooking? Sounds good. Um, I'm just going to plate up this lovely steamy rice. We've got um, the lovely steamy rice here. I'm going to put it onto a nice plate. Simple, light, steamy rice going in there now. Lemon rice. I'll tell you what, look, see how it's just caught on the bottom in this pan a little as well? That's not actually a negative, that's actually a positive. It's almost like a little chip. You can save that and put a little parmesan and olive oil on that and it's absolutely delicious. Um, so, rice is done. We're going to put that here. Let's have a look at that top shot again. I'm des designing my top shot. So we have rice. We have salad. Uh, we have uh, the piri piri now is coming out. And let's have a little look. Have a look at this. Come on. Close up of that, please. Let's go a little wider. A little wider. Look at that. There's our piri piri. That's the concept. Sweet peppers blipping. Look at the peri peri sauce around here. Just blipping away. Getting, like, beautiful and... and and sweet, absolutely delicious. The skin is still crispy, guys. The, the skin is still crispy. So look, we're going to put that in the middle. You can do this dinner in about half an hour, no problem. To finish off, guys, let me show you how to make a very healthy 45 seconds, but don't time me, uh, ice cream, right? Kind of ice cream. This is what happens. Get yourself a food processor, lid off, Slicing blade on, that goes in. Go to your freezer, get yourself 500 grams of uh, frozen fruit. It could be any fruit you like, bananas. Uh, what I tend to do is I tend to, uh, when I've got a fruit bowl, getting a little bit ropey looking or on the turn, I just literally chop it up, bag it up, freeze it. And then whenever the kids want a dessert, of all, you know, banana, peach, you know, I'm doing mixed black forest, uh, you know, sort of uh, black forest soft fruit. Um, we got cherries in there, black currants. Just put your 500 grams in there. We're going to sweeten that with honey. So about, this is, for an, this is enough for about four to six people. So about four tablespoons of honey, or no more than you put on your own porridge or something in the morning, right? So you put some uh, honey in there. And you literally get yourself uh, about 500 millilitres of yoghurt. So this is fat-free yoghurt. You can use Greek yoghurt, any yoghurt you want. About 500 mils goes in, or 400 actually, you could get away with easily. And then literally, waz it up. Let's go for it. And then we can count 45 seconds. Danny, come round here, darling. Okay, 45 seconds. Uh, uh, nearly up. A little bit more yoghurt goes in. Beautiful. Give it a good old whiz up. It's a bit noisy, and I do apologise. Danny, what was the last question that we got, brother? And I'm going to serve you some little bit of uh, ice cream. Uh, what motivates you? A girl from Ipswich was saying, what motivates you? Uh, what motivates me? Uh, what motivates me is just cooking, the people around the food industry. Um, you know, it's... Um, I don't know. I think it's important, it's important to do something in life that you enjoy. Um, I love cooking. I love the people that work in the business. Mm -hmm. um, try this ice cream. Okay. Have a look in here, guys. That's had about 50 seconds um, in there, and you'll notice, just with a little hot spoon, what will, what will happen now is you get a beautiful, that's it, look. That is basically 
an ice cream. Shiny, gorgeous, sweet. Have a little taste. You can sweeten it more if you want to. I'm going to do Danny a little portion. Here we go. Actually, let's do him a big portion because it's been a while. You know it takes me about a long time to eat food. So I could still be stuck here. For yeah, don't time. worry. Danny does. Let's have another little spoon. But look at the, look at the, look at the shine on that. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Homemade kind of ice cream. Absolutely healthy. Low-fat yoghurt, lovely fresh fruits, sweetened with honey, right? And now, in Australia, you can watch Danny endeavour in a little lick-up. Have a little lick-up, Danny. The whole thing? Finish it? Yeah, of course. Well, you know, you don't have to finish it, you know. Um, I'm going to just serve up the rest of these. Uh, guys, were there any other things you wanted me to talk about? I know there's bits of paper going around. Your vision for MOF in Australia? Okay, as I'm plating up these lovely ice creams, which you can still take pictures of, um, uh, my vision for the Ministry of Food Australia, my vision really is um, to fairly aggressively uh, work with the government and the good guys to create a number of multiple sites around Australia, Ministry of Foods, across the whole of Australia. Um, um, I know that the Ministry of Foods, I, I absolutely know that the Ministry of Food is the cheapest and most efficient and proficient way of truly changing lives uh, in the whole, you know, to try and halt the, the escalation of the epidemic of obesity. It's serious business, but through community and food and fun, you know, we don't have to be boring about all this, um, you can make, you know, profound change. Um, the advertising campaigns, I don't think work. Um, you know, the... the Little thing going on in a school is cute, um, you know, but we want to get kids cooking and growing. So the stuff that, Alice, um, that Stephanie Alexander is doing is so profoundly important. And I know that she's launched it across most of Victoria now, but we really want to see Australia that. as well. And Australia, in Queensland, mm -hmm. which is, this is incredible. And actual fact, let's, let's just talk about Australia at the moment. Um, to me, Australia isn't a country that should be having this problem, okay? I, don't, I, I, I can't work it out in my head, but it's, it's a problem. What's brilliant about Australia right now is that in America and England, there is not a, there, there is not a private company like Good Guys that have so bravely put good money on the table and say we're spending it on this cause. There's no equivalent in England or America doing that. So thank you, Good Guys. At the same time, Neither the American government or the English government have gone in with a company like Good Guys and so easily put money towards it as well. So thank you, local government. And, um, and also, I think um, stuff like the stuff that Stephanie Alexander's doing that's getting rolled out, you know, Australia is actually leading the way in change. And I really mean that. Um, so you should all, all give yourself a massive round of applause. Um, for everything that's, that's been. Um, I'm just finishing my ice creams here. So, lovely people, this is a sweet little dinner. How are you doing in Ipswich? How's the cooking going? I hope it's going well. I want to say a massive hello to uh, Gay Anderson uh, in Ipswich, cooking away. Um, keep it going. I'm done now. In theory, you guys should be done too, um, if our communications... Have, have gone well. I'm just putting a few basil leaves around the piri piri. Um, we're going to put all these recipes up um, on uh, jamielove.com. They'll probably be on goodguys.com or ministryoffood.com. Yeah, no. It'll all be on the website. Um, this kind of dinner you can rattle out in 25 minutes. Dessert, rice, salad, and the piri piri chicken. Um, it's been a pleasure. To, I mean, are we carried on? Can we take some more questions? What, what's yes, the score? I've got to take some more questions. So, Danny, you get back round and, okay. and, um, and take the questions. But thank you. So far, cooking, the cooking is done, lovely people. The cooking is done. Maria from Melbourne says, why are you so inspired by Italy and Italian food? Was uh, it Gennaro? Well, I'm inspired by all countries. Uh, you know, even Australia has been a massive um, inspiration to me. Uh, people, chefs, products and the food and the kind of waves of immigration that have made up your population, the Asian fusion elements, brilliant. Um, but yeah, I love Italian cooking. It's kind of been my second home for the last decade. Um, I, the thing I love about Italian cooking is um, 
you know, it's not so many men running it, basically. You know, we, you know when, what I mean by that is, instead of it being all about super, super chefy stuff, you know, I, I just love people that are so pleased to have an incredible box of lemons or, like, an amazing fish. Uh, I love the simplicity of herbs and citrus and simple cooking and roasting uh, and an appreciation for sort of pulses and veg. I just think Italy's wicked. But at the same time, all of those sort of Mediterranean countries, Portugal, Spain, you know, if you get near the mums in French country cooking, that's great too. Stay out the restaurants though. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think um, brilliant and inspiring. Lita from Melbourne says, how do you get kids to cook? How do you inspire them to cook? Um, Getting kids to cook is really easy. Uh, one, don't get too stressed about it. Two, you just, your only job as a parent is to make food represent fun. If you're stressed and uptight, they'll hate food. If you're a fussy pain up the backside, oh, I don't like that, oh, I don't like that, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. You know, um, you know the one person in the world that the kids look up to and love is their mum or their dad. And if they're sitting around being fussy and a pain in the backside, they're going to absorb that straight away. But, like, the thing you can do is try not to do big dramatic things once in a blue moon. Try and do little things often. When you go, even if you go to a boring old supermarket, just think about being a kid for a second and see it through a kid's eyes. Give them choices, give them opportunities, get them to touch things, feel things, taste things. Ask them, should I buy that or that? Or what do you want from this or this? Um, kind of just make it very, I'm not saying it's going to always go well, because kids are kids, I've got four of them, up and down like yo-yos. But, what I can say about my seven and eight-year-old, and I've worked with many, many families in many different countries from many different backgrounds, is if you slowly drip feed food and fun, they'll embrace it, and kids are not born and programmed to eat burgers and nuggets. You know, they're just comfortable to eat the things that are close to them. So if it's a big old billboard and a load of kids advertising, and that's all they see all day, that's what they're comfortable with. And as a parent, unfortunately, we're in a time now where governments haven't really got the balls to control advertisers and billboards and kids' adverts and kids' programming. So as a parent, you need to make it just cool and normal to get down the farmer's market and get amongst it. Um, but also, um, you know, ha have fun, you know, at the weekend, have fun and make some mess. Laugh, giggle, and it'll all be all right. Quite a few vegetarians online today, Jamie. Uh, a vegetarian option for Christmas as an alternative to meat, what would you cook? I don't know, really. If I was a vegetarian, you've just got to become really proficient at mushrooms, roasted veg, uh, get all over the veggies, um, you know, grow in your own stuff to get that maximum flavour, working with interesting different arrays of cheeses. Um, pulses, get really good at things like chickpeas, butter beans, cannellini beans. Uh, you can make the most wonderful things. I don't really know what I do. To be honest, uh, on my Christmas day, we, we do a goose and a turkey and gravy, but like we hit about 13 veg from the garden anyway, and we roast them, boil them, steam them, and like even that on its own, it's just done properly. That's what I would do, but I kind of, I'm not really into that kind of, oh, we're not having turkey, let me give you a nut roast. I'm not really into that. I just love doing beautiful different things with veggies. If you ever look at jamieoliver.com now, there's a load of veggie recipes up there. Have a little um, look around and I hope you get inspired. Go on, Dan Dan. So Amanda and Stacey from Beachmere say, Hi Jamie, if you could cook for anyone, who would it be? So basically, if, if there's anyone in the world that you would cook for, who would that be? Um, Oh, I don't know really. It's a funny old question. Um, um, probably in, you know, I, I, I'm, no one sort of particularly. I'll tell you what, um, I do quite, um, uh, I do quite miss uh, the, old, the guy that died from the fish, Steve. Um, uh, Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. I'd love to cook for Steve. Um, I dedicated uh, my seventh book to him when he died. And um, I really loved him. I loved his energy. He was funny, he was intelligent. I think he did a very similar job in wildlife and sort of, um, uh, sort of green issues that I try and do in food and health. Um, I really miss him. I, I didn't even know him. I, I actually, I've got a funny story that I've never told about him. Um, I met him once and I was at the Royal Albert Hall doing a massive um, TV awards in front of 7,500 people and in those days 11 million people were watching it on TV. 
Jerry Springer was in the room, the green room, and um, a couple of famous British people, and I was presenting an award. So you've got the ladies with like the head cans on and the microphone and the clipboard. Okay, Mr. Oliver, we're ready for you now. The show has started. And I walk out, and out there is this little ray of sunshine, Steve Irwin, um, and he was all tanned, and I didn't know who he was. I hadn't met him. He wasn't in my life at that stage. And he went, all right, mate. And I went, yeah. Well, there's a lot of Aussies in, in London anyway. I went, all right, mate, nice to meet you. But he was so blonde and sort of perfect and tanned. Um, uh, because she said, come through to makeup now, I thought he was my makeup artist. So I'm walking down the, I'm walking, I'm walking down the, the street, uh, walking down the back lanes, uh, and I go, listen, mate, I, I do the Naked Chef, we don't have makeup, I, I, I don't really go too heavy on the makeup, do you know what I mean? Just keep it really light. He goes, what? I said, not too much foundation, don't really want it, don't, and the hair's just the hair, you can't control it. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, you're the makeup artist. Yeah, he goes, the makeup artist? I'm a bloody crocodile wrestler. What are you talking about? <laughs> so my first, my first introduction to one of my heroes <laughs> was thinking that he was a makeup artist because he did look a little camp and he was very beautifully tanned. Um, but it was a funny story and he didn't talk to me for the rest of the night. <laughs> and I apologised to his manager and I don't think he was very happy either. But um, no, I think if I could cook for anyone... I think I cook for him. I, I think it, the world is a sadder place without him. And, um, and, uh, and his energy was just absolutely um, addictive. So, yeah, that's the answer to that. Very long answer to that simple question. <laughs> I think we're going to do one more, or are we calling it a day? I think we're calling it a day. Um, guys, let's have a top shot again. Uh, there we go. Help. Well, um, we're just going to just change that. Um, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I've got ice cream all over me. It's been a pleasure, um, bear with the top shop, it's been a pleasure cooking with you. Um, I love Australia very much. Um, you've got such a wonderful country there, beautiful produce. Um, and I just want to wish the Ministry of Food all the luck in the world. It's so important that the good guys have done this. And it's so important that the local government support this and continue su to support this. And it's all about the love. It's all about the love, guys. Um, you know, skin on skin, locals on locals. You can come back to me now, because I'm slightly self-important, as you well know. Um, it's all about the love. Thank you. 30-minute um, meal. Recipes are online. Uh, love to Ipswich. Ipswich, I love you. Uh, thank you to all the dignitaries. Uh, that came. Thank you to the press that came. Just good luck. Look, guys, you're going you're gonna to smash it. You're going to do a great job. Ipswich will be an example for the rest of the country. Um, this is, I can promise you, the cheapest and most proficient way of empowering communities that need help, desperately need help, to change themselves, save money, buy differently, shop differently, cook differently, and save lives. Honestly. Honestly. So, good luck. I love you guys. Take care. And that is over and out from me, Mr. Oliver, in England, snowing at minus 17. Back to you in the sun. Woo! All about the luck.